This is Lloyd Hannison from beautiful Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, and you're listening to the Nintendo Switchcraft Podcast. More specifically, you're listening to episode 354 of the Nintendo Switchcraft Podcast, and on this episode, we're going to be talking about Breath of the Wild, Mini Switch, uh, Grab a Stylus, Realm Royale, those stories and more on this episode of Nintendo Switchcraft. Here we go. It's time for Nintendo. Switchcraft is brought to you live three times a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 3 p.m. U.S. Eastern and on Saturday at whatever time I can get to it. Tune in live by heading on over to runjump, twitch.tv slash runjumpstomp. I almost screwed it up again. This is take like four, by the way. Uh, this episode of Switchcraft is made possible by Kenneth G. Get Switchcraft and my other content ad-free for as little as a dollar by heading on over to patreon.com slash runjumpstomp. If you want to leave a voicemail and become part of the show, head on over to runjumpstomp.com slash voicemail from any device, and I may even play it on the show. Okay, before we get started with the actual news for today, I've got like two, three quick things that I want to clear up or at least talk about. First off, I've been uh, doing this contest for the last week for a... um, for Nintendo Switch Doc Sock. So far, we've got like 20 people have entered, which is way lower than I expected. Uh, and I think the reason is because I said no to international people. Now, I got a tweet from uh, Door to Door Geek, who actually used to sponsor the podcast because he has his own uh, podcast network, which you can just go to go follow him on Twitter. I'm sure you'll find out more about it. But he used to sponsor the podcast back in the day. Um, and he said, Bill, Include international people in your contest. I will pay the difference in shipping. So, all right, you convinced me. I'm going to extend the contest by a week. And uh, if somebody internationally wins, then I will still ship it uh, across borders. So there you go. Ask and you shall receive. If you want to win uh, this Nintendo Switch dock sock, which is made by my wife from her from her Etsy shop, which is etsy.com slash shop slash run jump stomp. Uh, super easy to do. Just all you need to do is tweet a picture of your Nintendo Switch uh, so that I can see what Joy-Con colors you have decided on. And let me know why you decided on them. And of course, include the hashtag Nintendo Switchcraft. I will enter you into the contest. And next Saturday... Uh, we will pick a winner with a like a random number generator or something. Because right now, what I'm doing is every time somebody tweets at me uh, with that, I grab the 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 URL and throw it in a uh, spreadsheet. So I'll end up just picking uh, somebody at random on the next episode, or on I'm sorry, on next Saturday's episode, and that person will win this super cool dock sock. Which, if you don't know what a dock sock is, you put it on the front of your Nintendo Switch dock. And it makes it look super cool. So now that we've got that out of the way, I have somebody that I want to thank. I want to thank SMG Studios. Uh, SMG Studios has made, um, well, published a lot of games. And one of the games that they uh, have put on the Nintendo Switch is Death Squared. Uh, Death Squared is this really fun puzzle game where you play as uh, a cube and you have to get the cube onto like little portals in order to or like like switches in order to le- uh, finish the level uh the problem being is that as the different cubes move around the stage they trigger traps that kill the other cubes hence the name death squared well they uh asked me for my address and i gave it to them and they sent me four of these little dudes and i'm holding it on this side because it says if you don't if you're listening to the podcast instead of watching it on youtube or on twitch uh, it's just a little yellow plushy cube it's very soft and uh it has i'm with stupid on it and it's sitting next to me and i just love it uh so i wanted to thank smg studios for sending that to me it was really cool of them um one last thing before we get to the news uh i got the uh, wd-40 electrical contact cleaner spray and i'm going to be using it 
on my red and blue joy cons which have been experiencing the uh the dreaded drift and i will report back now last night i sprayed some and it has since uh evaporated but i gotta say i worry that i didn't actually get any into the actual joy con because like it's so tight so i may actually get some uh like a screwdriver and take it apart uh, but I will report back sometime next week about whether or not that cleared up the drift or not. And, uh, uh, you know, if it does, then I will include links to the uh, the electrical contact cleaner spray that I bought off Amazon for, I think it was like seven bucks. Uh, I'll, I'll include a link to it in the show notes. But I'm not going to include a link now because I don't know if it's going to work. And I don't want anybody to buy it until I've tested it out. All right. Now that we've got all of that out of the way, all the housekeeping, it's time to talk uh, news. Frogger's Sega's arcade game, now a home video game from Parker Brothers, the ones to beat. All right, so why are we getting a sequel to Breath of the Wild? That's the question uh, that is being asked. And Mr. Uh, Aonuma, who is the producer of Breath of the Wild, he was talking to Jason Schreier, uh, who is uh, a, a, a writer or maybe the owner of Kotaku. I don't really know what, what his deal is. I know he, I know he's a writer because he wrote Blood, Sweat, and Pixels, which is a fantastic book. Um, but anyway, he's a journalist over at Kotaku, and he was talking to Mr. Aonuma. And they were talking about um, why are we getting a... Well, they were talking about all things Zelda, of course, but one of the things that they were talking about is why are we getting a sequel to Breath of the Wild? And Mr. Onuma said something really, really interesting. Um, where is it? There we go. Uh, so uh, Schreier asked, what made you and the team decide to make a sequel to Breath of the Wild as opposed to a new Zelda game? Uh, Onuma replied uh, that uh, when we released the DLC for Breath of the Wild, we, we realized that this is a great way to add more elements to the game world. But when it comes down to technical things, DLC is pretty much data. You're adding data to a pre-existing title. And so when we wanted to add bigger changes, DLC was not enough. And that's why maybe we thought a sequel would be a good fit. Schreier asked, was the sequel originally planned as DLC? And Mr. Aonuma said, uh, initially we were, we, were, we were thinking of just DLC ideas, but then we had a lot of ideas and we said, this is too many ideas. Let's just make a new one. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, make one new game and start from scratch. And that is, that's, that's pretty interesting. And, and I'm not sure how I feel about it. Like personally, I, you know what? I, I do know how I feel about it. Part of me wants it to just be DLC, but another part of me looks at this and says, Hey, guess what? This is good for all those people who finished Breath of the Wild and traded it in, got rid of it, and they don't have it anymore. If they brought out more DLC, especially after having said there's going to be no deal, no more DLC for Zelda, if they had brought out DLC, there would be a lot of angry people uh, there. Um, Mr. Swarlton, I'm sorry, Mick Swarlton uh, in, in chat is, is reminding me that Jason Schreier's title is news editor at Kotaku. Well, he's also a journalist. Uh, but anyway, what does this say about the game? Uh, I think it says that because it started out as DLC, that it's going to take place in the same world. I think it was kind of obvious from the trailer that it was going to take place in the same world, uh, because we saw that same world and it's going to have mechanics that would have been too difficult to change the existing game. So I'm guessing it would have something along the lines of different abilities that didn't exist in the original game. Things like maybe a hook shot and stuff like that. And I am very, very excited for it. However, I just want everybody to keep in mind it's going to be an extremely long time before we see this game. In fact, I'm saying it'll be probably... 18 months before we hear from this game again, uh, or I'm sorry, before we get our hands on this game, I am predicting that it's going to be holiday 2020. A lot of people are telling me I'm way off base, but Hey, guess what? If, if a podcast is not a place where you can, uh, just 
make a guess and be wrong, then what else is a podcast? So I'm totally fine that, uh, or, or with it not, I'm, I'm totally fine with not being right about when this game is going to come out. Um, but I'm, pr I, I'm pretty sure that that's when it's going to happen. It's going to happen next holiday. I don't think that they would have announced it yet if they, if they weren't close to completion. And when I say close to completion, that's 18 months from now. So I think, I think that they can do it and, uh, I'm excited. All right, let's move on and talk about, um, the switch mini. So I got an email from a guy uh, who he said, just keep it anonymous, but he, he basically he said anonymous uh, or keep it anonymous. And here was the email. The email said, why haven't you talked about the switch mini leak yet? And uh, I, I wasn't sure if I wanted to talk about the switch mini leak. I mean, we've, we've had so many of these, these leaks that it's, it's starting to feel like when people keep saying that the same thing's going to happen over and over and over again, it's like people start to get disappointed when that thing doesn't happen. So sometimes I don't like to report on rumors that I've already kind of talked about, if that makes sense. So I've talked about the Switch Mini rumor in the past, and that's why when this new leak uh came out i just kind of ignored it and said well we'll we'll see what happens so for those of you that don't know there is a a and i'm trying to open this uh the image up in a new tab here we go uh there's this image uh which has leaked out there uh which is clearly a render uh it's clearly a render but we've got the switch mini uh a render of the switch mini and then a case now this has happened a lot to Apple, like Apple has um, had their their phone designs leaked by case manufacturers many times in the past. And honestly, <laughs> I, if I were the case manufacturer, I would not like I you you could you could put your company under uh, by leaking Apple stuff because they would say, well, we're never going to give you. Uh, the specs of our of, of our uh, devices again because you'll leak the you'll leak the cases and so if we don't give you the specs then your cases won't be first to the market and nobody's gonna buy them um, but this is a, so but we've seen it both uh, these leaks with cases come out and where they're like here's a case for this device that doesn't exist yet um, and we've seen those as actually being real products and we've seen them as not being real products. And I look at this and it's clearly a render. Um, but I don't know. I, I just want to talk about the, the overall design of the switch mini that we see in this. It looks about the size of a cell phone. Uh, and it's got a D pad, like a real D pad, not the joy con D pad, which I actually like the joy con D pad. I'm sure that you guys have have heard me uh, talk about that before. It has the offset um, sticks, which I think, I think that's a mis. I, I I don't think that this is true because of the offset sticks, and and I know that people will say, well, Bill, the the switch has offset sticks. Bill, it has offset sticks. So why wouldn't the Switch Mini have offset set sticks? Well, the reason is is because the Switch is much bigger than what this Switch Mini looks like. And having an offset stick on the right-hand side means that you don't have any room for your hand to really hold on to to hit that stick. I think that that's a huge problem. And the whole reason that we have offset sticks on the Nintendo Switch is because um, they wanted to be able to take the... the no matter which Joy-Con you have, if you take it off and you turn it sideways, they are in the same orientation. If you have non-offset sticks, when you turn them sideways, it doesn't work uh, as a, uh, a controller that you can hold sideways. That's not an issue for this unibody Switch Mini because the Joy-Cons don't come off. So having 
the offset uh, sticks makes no sense. It would make much more sense for the right stick to be above the ABXY buttons. And I think that that like that right there is a dead giveaway that this is a fake to me. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm fine if I'm wrong. Uh, I've been wrong before, but I'm calling this as a total fake. In fact, I feel like I've seen this Switch Mini render before. And then we've got a case that somebody has added to and don't don't get me wrong i'm not saying that i'm not saying that this case isn't a real thing i'm saying that the the manufacturer of this case is basing it off of leaked information or rumored information and they they just want to be first to market at least that's what i'm guessing uh i again i could be way off base and this could be something totally true um, I've heard rumors that we're supposed to hear something next week about the Switch Mini. I don't believe them. Uh, I don't think so. I think that Nintendo is going to play this one close to the vest. It's not going to get leaked, and they are going to surprise everyone when they do it. Uh, but I don't anticipate that it's going to be anytime soon. So, anyway, that's my thoughts on the Switch Mini case leak. And for me, I think it's fake. But that being said, do I think that we're going to get a Switch Mini at some, some point? Absolutely. Nintendo would be foolish not to. Uh, over time, Nintendo will figure out ways to make this product cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. One of the ways to make it kid-proof, to make it more appealing to uh, parents to buy for their kids, is to get rid of the moving parts. Whenever you have all those moving parts, you are asking for it to get broken. Uh, the, the Joy-Cons being uh, removable means that the that little kids are going to lose them. And I'm not saying that if you want to switch mini, you're a little kid. I'm saying that that's a definitely a better option for little kids than the full-on Switch. So I do think that at some point Nintendo is going to give us the Switch mini, especially since we heard nothing about the 3DS this year. It makes a lot of sense for them to bring a Switch Mini out. But is this the, the design? I don't know. Is this uh, leak real? I doubt it. Uh, are, these, are these cases real and can you buy them? Yes. Why you would, I don't understand. Um, because the, the, the product isn't even out yet. Oh, if you guys listen, you can hear a bunch of motorcycles driving past my house right now. That's That's always fun. All right, let's talk about something else that is always fun. But first, I want to take a second to thank our sponsors. The more game cartridges a video game system plays, the more fun it is. Okay, Mario Maker 2. Mario Maker 2. It's coming out soon. I mean, it is It is coming out on June 28th. That is six days from now. Um, I know that there's a lot of people very, very excited for this game. I am one of them. I still have not pre-ordered it. I have not decided whether or not I'm going to buy it day one or not. Part of me wants to wait until they patch it. Uh, for those of you who haven't listened to previous episodes, uh, Mario Maker 2 is going to receive an, a post-launch patch that will allow you to play with friends. And part of me wants to wait until that patch comes out so that I can show Nintendo, hey, this feature is very important to me so that's why i didn't buy it ahead of time will that really do anything absolutely not am i going to get mario maker 2 100 am i going to get it on launch day i don't know yet uh but i'm excited for it but there is one thing about it that i'm not excited for and that is the, uh over at kotaku it seems like the kotaku sh show today we've got a bunch of kotaku links but uh they got hands on with, uh, I mean, they're a big publication. They're going to get hands on with the uh, with the Nintendo stuff early, uh, but they got their hands on the uh, Mario Maker two early, and there was something that was very, very upsetting. And I'm looking for it right now. Uh, here we go. Um, oh no! Uh, shoot, where is it? Here we go. All right. So while there are significant upgrades to the creation tool the biggest reworking is that now you can you can now create using using a controller instead of a touchscreen. awesome i'm very excited about that 
Why? Well, believe it or not, some people still use their Switch on a television and you'd have a hard time getting the, to the touch screen while it's sitting in the dock. Of course, that makes perfect sense. Uh, let's, let's continue with the next part. Uh, where was it? Okay. Uh, they said that it worked really well. Um, but here's the part that's upsetting. Um, the big mesh pad was precise enough to work accurately inside of Mario Maker's relatively chunky grid lines. And I'm very, and I'm very glad it did because as near as I can figure, if you want to create levels in Switch's handheld mode, you must use the touch screen. Once you snap the Joy-Cons onto the system, the only way to access the icons is via touch. And so if you want to create in handheld mode, which you probably do, and you don't own a capacitive stylus, you're going to be smearing up the switch screen with your finger and it's going to be gross. Okay, so let's not worry so much about whether you're going to use a stylus or your finger or whatever, because you know what? I use my... I use my phone without a stylus all day. And you know what I do when it gets gross? I just rub it on my shirt and it looks nice and clean again. Um, of course, I'm sure that that uh, Apple's probably did a better job on getting an oleophob oleoph ole oleophobic coating. I'm probably saying that word wrong than Nintendo did. Um, but the thing that bothers me here is that if the Switch is docked, all those menu items work like you can you can use a controller to control the creation of the game you do not have to create the game using the touch screen you have the option of using a controller awesome very happy about that wonderful um however once you undock and you put your um joy cons on the side then you can't anymore like you cannot you can no longer access the icons unless you touch them and i find that to be just one of the f most foolish design decisions that i've ever heard of obviously there are, are already hooks to make it work if you want to make it so that we can use the touch screen that's fine i have no problem with that in fact most people would probably prefer to use the touch screen when designing levels. But why restrict us and make it so that we can't use the controls? That doesn't make any sense to me. That's just poor design and it's the kind of thing Nintendo does all of the time. Um, I, I just, I don't understand the thinking and I wish Nintendo would explain it to us because maybe there's a good reason, but I certainly can't think of it. Um, I just, th I think it's silly. Anyway, I don't want to spend time complaining about it. Uh, one person, and I can't remember who they were, but they tweeted at me and they said, Bill, because uh, I had tweeted about this. I was going to talk, I was going to make this a light switch, but I decided to include it in the main show. Uh, but they, they tweeted at me and they, they said, Bill, I just want to know if I undock it, can I still play with the controls while it's undocked if I don't have the Joy-Cons attached to the Switch. I don't have an answer for you, and we won't have an answer for another six days probably. Uh, but the reason why, like some of you might be like, well, why would they want to do that? Well, they want to use it on the treadmill so that they can walk on the treadmill, and while they're walking on the treadmill, uh, get some exercise and entertain themselves by making um, uh, Mario Maker levels, which I think is awesome. Like, I use my iPad all the time on my um, my indoor bicycle. Like I, right now I'm rewatching all of the Marvel movies from the very beginning all the way up through um, some in, in, in so, sometime in the next five, six years, I will finish and I'll, I'll, I'll catch up to Endgame and I'll, I'll watch that one again. It's, 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 a, it's a lot and I watch it in basically half hour to 40 minute increments on my, on my bicycle. Um, so I can understand the, the desire to entertain yourself while you are exercising because exercising is the worst thing ever. It's no fun. Um, that being said, uh, I don't have an answer for you and, um, you know, fingers crossed that you can still play that way or what would be even better is if Nintendo would abandon this ridiculous design choice and just say, Hey, 
everybody can play the way that they want to play. Um, it seemed to work with uh, with the uh, with playing with your friends. So only time will tell. When it comes to space games, nobody compares to Atari. Excuse me, have you compared them to Intellivision? In television? Sure, they've got great space games, like in television space battle. I didn't know. I didn't know that Realm Royale is now free to play on the Nintendo Switch. Um, this is from a tweet from the developer. And, uh, you know, if you're looking for an alternative to Fortnite, uh, Realm Royale is a really cool game. I, I really like it. It is a battle royale. It has a crafting mechanic where... Uh, you go to a forge and you take the items that you find <clears throat> and uh, you can turn them into new weapons and new abilities. Uh, but while you're crafting, smoke comes out of the forge and basically tells everybody that you are, uh, hey, everybody, look, here's the person. Uh, they're building something. If you come kill them, you can take it. Uh, which is is really cool mechanic. I like Realm Royale. I think it's a good game. I've not played it on the Switch yet because, as you've as you've I'm sure you've heard, I am uh, neck deep. Actually, I'm probably eyeball deep right now in uh, Final Fantasy 12. I'm just having so much fun with this game. It's so good, and I need to play more of it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna shut this off because what's gonna happen is I'm just gonna stop talking and start playing it. I'm, I love that game. Um, but Realm Royale is now free to play on the Nintendo Switch. So go download it and check it out. If you've not played it before, uh, I think you'll have fun with it. And if you really, really like Fortnite, uh, this one doesn't have building. Instead, it has crafting. And I think it's... Uh, I actually prefer it because I don't like the building mechanic in Fortnite myself. All right. Let's talk about Devil May Cry. Uh, actually, how where are we on time? No, we're, we're not going to talk about Devil May Cry. I'm going to do that as a uh, light switch because we're coming up on a half an hour. So I'm going to push that to the next episode or a light switch um but devil may cry make sure you listen to uh to that episode because i have i have an opinion about that and it's going to take too long for me to talk about all right let's wrap up the show i am odyssey 2 now and get 82 dollars worth of free games including pickaxe pete oh my goodness pickaxe pete you know what pickaxe pete does he joins communities and you can join a community over at runjumpstomp.com discord you can also watch the show live and uh, there's a bunch of like I, I had to do four takes for this episode because I just kept screwing up. So they had they got all that um, hilarity and you guys are going to miss out on that stuff because you weren't here live. Come live twitch.tv slash run jump stomp. You can get a hold of me through Twitter at run jump stomp. Use the hashtag Nintendo Switchcraft. If you're looking for ways to support the show, uh, head on over to runjumpstomp.com slash thank you. You'll find all kinds of links there for ways you can support the show like my wife's Etsy shop. Um what else? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you like this show, you'll probably like my other shows. So make sure you sh that you check those out over at runjumpstomp.com slash shows. The music you're hearing right now is Corneria Star Fox Remix by Noteblock. It's awesome. You're awesome. Thanks for hanging out with me. I'll see you guys next time. Until then, bye-bye. Wow.